So I've basically already packed up almost all of my stuff. It's fairly evident that I'm leaving either today or tomorrow. And my mother comes in and I'm sitting there at the table. She just stands in front of me. I'm trying not to make eye contact, eye contact with her to engage her in a conversation. And she just stands there. This is her thing. She just stands there in front of me and stares at me until I acknowledge that she's there so I don't play the game and I ignore her. This time she was standing there for quite a while. And then she says, are you going somewhere? I've been planning and packing to move. I have told her repeatedly that I'm moving, that I'm leaving, and it's like it's taking her by surprise. Are you, are you, are you going, going out? Are you going to the store, perhaps? You're coming back, right? I mean, I'm putting those words into her mouth, but that's essentially what the meaning behind it was. Like this morning, I had already packed most of my stuff last yesterday and this morning she went to the store and got a ton of groceries and it's just the two of us in the house she got groceries planning for me to stay to stay and I'm not even gonna get into why all the ways that that's annoying and you know there's gonna be some people watching this going oh your your mom's so nice no 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 watch the whole story go to my other channel listen to the recording that I have of her she's not nice this is manipulation point is she is acting like I'm not going anywhere and she this morning I was sitting in the van and she left the house and she was as usual giving me dirty looks and the whole uh, you know dirty looks is basically it so she's punishing me for leaving she's punishing me for moving on with my life she's punishing me for doing things for being independent I'm I'm almost 40. It's absolutely insane that she does that. She's insane. She is insane. <laughs> In case you've been wondering where I've been sleeping this whole time since I sold my bed, I've been literally sleeping on the floor for the past several months. I had my yoga mat, a couple blankets, and a couple pillows, and that was it. So the van is gonna be so soft. I just put the cats in the van. <laughs> I'm letting them walk around and get used to it. Um, they've been in there before several times but uh it's trying not to like traumatize them because i can't like just talk to them and be like hey so this is your last time in this house right i feel like i want to deal with my feelings but i can't feel anything yet i know that this should be like this emotionally dramatic moment but all I can think of is, did I forget anything? What else do I have to do? What's next? Where are we going to park tonight? All of that stuff. I think when we get settled in and I have time to think, that's when it's gonna hit me. But this is the last time that I'm at this house. There is still way too much stuff in here. Um, <laughs> it's like kind of hard to walk around. Um, so. That's a thing I gotta work on. While I'm driving, I'm gonna have them in the carriers there right beside me so they can see me and I can console them as they're freaking out. But I don't wanna do that until we have to, to give them some time to relax a little bit. I think they're adapting well. Hey, buddy. I think I think she likes it. Okay. I got the fuzzballs. Oh, you're so cute. I love you. 
in the carriers and we are just gonna pick a spot sorry pick a location and uh, then I'm gonna let them out for a couple hours on the leash at a park. <laughs> it's already 4.30 and the sun goes down in not too long. So I'm not sure if I should move. I kind of feel like I should move. I just have absolutely no idea where to go. And I knew that this was going to happen. And yet I failed to plan for it. I've been driving around trying to find a new location and you have to see this. <laughs> This is a swamp in the suburbs. What? It's cute. I'm contemplating parking here tonight. I'm a little bit worried that if I let the cats out, they'll end up in the water, but if they're on the leash, that shouldn't be an issue. But this ground does not really look very cat friendly. I don't know. Hi. So we settled on a location. It's the swamp. Because it is a cul-de-sac. And it's pretty quiet. There's a parking spot. And in one direction where there's some privacy. The cats can uh, get tied to that c uh, cement brick thing and they can just hang out. This one, however, is a walker. <laughs> so I'm gonna take her, I don't know, hopefully not very far because I gotta keep an eye on everybody else, right? For the night it is getting dark um, I'm very grateful that the kitties are sleepy so hopefully they're not gonna freak out all night priority number one tonight is to stay warm what I'm gonna do right now it's about six ish something like that um, after an hour of trying to charge the, the jackery I could only get it to like 24% so hopefully that lasts us the night for the freezer I mean it's gonna be cold enough so it's not the end of the world um, right now I'm going to make some food then I'm going to try to wash the dishes and then I think I'm just gonna go to bed I wake up early and have a nice coffee yeah I'm eating what I would normally consider like an okay meal but sitting here basically in the middle of nowhere. I mean, I'm, I'm obviously in the suburbs. I'm not in the middle of nowhere, but just like on the road somewhere eating like real cooked food. It is like the best feeling or one of the best feelings. It's, it's, it's so nice. And as I'm eating all these ideas are starting to come to me like for work it's like it's validating to me that I really needed to oh it's validating to me that I really needed to get out of that environment or just to move on and get past that obstacle to get to the point where I can think and focus on other things, focus on what matters, and it's so nice. It's about seven o'clock. I'm exhausted, it's been a super long day, so I'm just gonna pass out and probably wake up at the crack of dawn, if not before, 
and make a nice coffee. I'm excited for that. It's about 7 degrees right now, Canadian, and it's supposed to go down to about 4 degrees or maybe 3. So we'll see how cold that feels, but right now I feel really good. I feel comfortable. So we'll see. The Jackery will likely die, <laughs> but I think it'll be okay because it's cold enough that I don't think the things in the freezer are going to thaw out before the sun comes up and I can put the, uh, the solar panel up. We'll find out. Well, these guys were sleeping until they heard the car get uh, uh, turn on. I am leaving this location as much as I anticipated in my head that we'd all get out on a sunny morning and have a coffee and hang out outside for a bit. That is not going to happen because I everything is dead. All the power <laughs> is dead. I and I really want to get out of this neighborhood before people wake up. <laughs> I'm running the engine in this parking lot because the van is super loud. That's why I wanted to leave the area that I was in because the Jackery was dead, all my solar lights were dead, my phone was dead, so I needed to start charging things. The sun wasn't fully up yet, so I, kn I knew I wasn't gonna get a lot of watts pulled in by the solar panel. So I plugged it into the van and I left that area so that I wouldn't bother people when I turn the van on and now I'm here in this parking lot because it seems appropriate. Good morning! This is the second morning that I'm in the van. I am getting used to it pretty quickly. Uh, the temperature last night was about the same as the first night. The first night, I, I don't remember if I said this before, but it got to a point, it was okay um, earlier on, and then it got to a point in the middle of the night where I thought I was gonna die. <laughs> but, like, I mean, I knew that it wasn't. I'm just saying that it was really, really cold. Um, but then I just opened the sleeping bag I had and uh, put it over me slash us, and it was totally fine. And I so I slept with that last night and I was totally fine, totally comfortable. The cat seemed to be totally fine. I don't want it to, to get too cold in here for them. Um, so every once in a while, if I need to, I'll turn the camp stove on just to like bring it up a degree or a couple of degrees. But it's been pretty good. I got a buddy heater yesterday too, just in case I need it. And um, also the van heater itself. I tried it on the first night and it wasn't working and I was like scared. But then yesterday I realized during the day that it does get hot, but only after like the van has been running for a significant amount of time so that the engine can get hot. So that's why I got the buddy heater because I can't rely on the, the car engine heater. But you know, overall I think it was pretty, it was pretty comfortable. This pot is there because I wanted to get it out of the way last night since I broke a dish last night that's in there. Um, so I'm going to show you what kind of shape this van is in right now. There is stuff, there's my buddy heater box, there is stuff literally everywhere. It is uh, not 
<laughs> that is a cabinet. That's the cabinet that I, I was supposed to put up. Um, so I'm going to do that today. I'm basically today, before I leave town, I'm going to try to just like put stuff together a little more so that there's actually space to move around and get stuff done in here because this is not okay last night or sorry yesterday as i was driving the berkey flew over like several times so that's something that i have to deal with today is to secure that in place <laughs> Nice. 